Uh, what's going on, everybody? It's Lawrence Eugene, and this is What's the Business Podcast, and this is another special episode for our new short film, Dear Forgiveness, and I have my co-producer, uh, co-cinematographer, the DP uh, for Dear Forgiveness with me, my classmate, my battle buddy, uh, fellow veteran, hey, hey, you name it, uh, we have it in common. Uh, I have Amir Cole uh, on this. He also plays Brian, he is a, a, a Swiss Army Knight, uh, forgive it. Well, he's an American Army Knight, <laughs> if you will. He is uh, a phenomenal gentleman. I connected with him uh, at school. He reached out to me, showed me love. And when I say he came through for me, I am more than honored and privileged to do this interview. Amir, welcome, man. Welcome to What's the Business. How are you? All right, I'm doing good. Thanks for having me on. Awesome, awesome, awesome. So um, let's just jump straight into it. What pushed you uh, to say yes to the role of Brian? We're going to talk about the role first. What what pushed you to say that, yes, you would you would do the role of Brian? Well, I've always had a, a fondness for acting. You know, as I say, I say it all the time, my strength in film is writing. But I always had a fondness for acting. You can always be somebody else at any given moment. The world is just stage. So when you came along and asked me, you know, hey, can you my taking on this role? I was like, hey, might as well just jump on it and, you know, get this experience in. You know, I'm not a seasoned actor or anything like that, like the rest of the cast was. But, you know, I felt like I could probably uh, beat off of him, hone on to my skills. But I, I definitely, like, uh, I enjoyed the, the challenge. And I enjoyed uh, playing the part of Brian. Awesome, awesome. And in that role of Brian, uh, y'all had some similarities, and we're gonna we're gonna talk about these similarities. Uh, the very first foremost, uh, everybody out there, if you're listening uh, to this podcast on your favorite uh, podcasting platform, uh, you can go over to my YouTube VSC Media Network, uh, the Vibe Spot Experience, or go over to the Vibe Spot Experience .net, and you'll see in his background uh, he has some military uh paraphernalia uh what do you and brian have in common well i'm so glad you asked that question <laughs> <laughs> well first of all it took me for a loop when i when i read your um you know description of brian and brian was a military man with uh you know doing combat tours and you know he had some combat injuries now uh, you know it's no secret as you see in the background Military, you know, um, I I was a Rangers about 15 years. That was most of my career. I did quite a few combat tours myself, and I got, you know, quite a few bumps and bruises. So it was um, just the, the whole premise of Brian and his background story just totally related to my own personal story. Awesome, awesome. And I want to just say, uh, we say it all the time, and but I want to thank you for your service. I understand what you've sacrificed, what you've put on the line. Um, I've supported. I've uh, picked up the mess that you've made as being an 88 bike. Uh, <laughs> but also, I've seen the good that the Rangers do at the same time when you all are in those theaters of operation. And I just want to say uh, hats off to you. And I'm glad that you're here and able to uh, take part of this, you know, on this side for your brothers that did and I greatly appreciate you, man. I thank say you, for thank you. And I thank you for your service. <laughs> <laughs> no problem. So um let, let's let's switch to the production side. What about the script prompted you and pushed you with the shot choices that you made and that you suggested to uh to me that we make for this this production. Okay, as far as uh, the as uh, the script, reading certain uh, elements of the script and uh, the the dialogue, some of the dialogue you can, you could tell off the bat was intense and emotional. Uh, so if, for those uh, for those moments, you really have to consider that you know you want the audience to be drawn in to that emotion. Yeah. And you know, of course, with a shot too far away, you're not going to feel that emotion as opposed to close up in person in this in the guy's face to uh, it's like Jane's face to you know to, to see the anger in his face, see the emotion. The the it, it was so many different emotions you could tell he was feeling betrayal, anger, uh, you know, confusion. Uh, but 
mostly just mostly the fact that he was just really really angry at at Brian. Right. So you know we we had to we had to we had to make sure that the audience you know can see these see this emotion. But of course, at the same time, you know all all the other shots. You know we of course we you know you want you want the audience to understand the whole entire environment, the whole entire situation of what where he's at at the at the moment. But um, yeah, it was it. Uh, th that's really dictated wh wh how we were looking at as far as like shots and angles and, and uh, of course you know space wise. <laughs> so with we'll leading into that, what what I could tell that you're passionate about film because when you came in, you were you 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 didn't miss a beat. It was like we worked on thousands of shoots before everybody just flowed. But I noticed that there was a, it was like a piece that you had with it. What what about filmmaking? Is it that that you like, or what drew you to to go to filmmaking school? You know, after doing a fifteen year career, you know, in the military, and after doing multiple tours of combat, I've been there. I've been in the box. So that's that's there's a lot of heaviness. What would cause you to do something that's so psychologically demanding? You know. Well, you know, it's it is psychologically demanding for one thing, but you know, as far as like you know, military, we, we're, you know, we're ready for something like that mentally. You know, we're trained to, to to take on that adversity. But you know, to answer your question, it was a, you know, we we as military uh, men and women, we go through a lot over there, and a lot of people don't know that. So what brought me into the film was the fact that there's a lot of stories out there that the the, the world will never hear you know most of these movies are out here especially the war films you'll hear about the, a situation that changed the tide of a war or somebody who won the medal of honor but they tend to forget that there were countless soldiers you know that was out there that made made sacrifices of their own right. uh ultimate sacrifice they may not have won the medal of honor actually earned the medal of honor but they were out there just the same you know doing their part in the war so I wanted to share some of those stories with the world. So I got that's what brought me into film, you know, the, to tell other stories besides the the major heroic uh, situations. The, everybody over there were heroes in their own right. Right. Exactly. So over there, they sacrificed. Some came back with physical scars. A lot came back with mental scars. But. In, but they were all heroes in their own right. And they should have their stories told just as much as it, as the guy who earned the Medal of Honor. Right. So that that was that's always been my passion to go forth and tell those stories if possible. So that that's amazing because I, I feel the same way. That's why this one was real special, because as being my first major project, um, to be able to talk about the family aspect of the military it, it it's spoken and you always hear thanks to the to the men and women that served and thanks but we, they forget about the, the family they forget about the spouses and the the emotional trauma for the children and the scars for the children and the gaps and the distances that's put in these in these heroes lives you know because and it there's a strain that comes after getting out you know, yes. there are a lot of people. And then even while you're in, you got the pressures of the world. And it's like the military, I tell people a lot, the military is its own world. Yes, it is. You, know, you you got you got you got the the world for Harry Potter, you got the Marvel universe. They don't even touch the military of of the the intricacies and the 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 complexities that we face on a daily basis. And some of us start at 17 years old. You know, yes. some of us, you know, stay for 20, 30 years. You know, you did 15. You achieved one of the one of the, the pinnacle ranks, you know, and and I agree that story has to be told. That story has to be conferred to the people that, hey, we are humans and we we struggle, but we we did some things that we need support from y'all now. We need love from y'all to help us through these things because the VA, it does what it can do, but it still takes the people. Still I, takes the village. <laughs> still takes the village. So um, 
where can people find you, man? If they're if and what is the next direction for Amir Cole? Where where is Amir Cole headed? You know, it, uh, uh, if the if there's that when the directors see this, when the casting directors see this, when the production companies see this, what does Amir Cole want them to know? Okay, well, since you put it that way, <laughs> Amir Cole is gonna. He's, him and uh Wildcat Five Nine uh Entertainment in uh, LLC. That's my that's my branch. <laughs> Wildcat Five Nine Entertainment. Did you hear it? There we go. <laughs> yes, Wildcat Five Nine Entertainment. Well, we got we have our own set of projects that we're gonna do. Hopefully, Lawrence, that you'll you know come aboard and collaborate with me. Absolutely. And uh, we got we got a bunch of other uh, projects ahead. You know, I as a yeah, as you stated before, I'm in school with you, so I still have my short film project to do. Uh, I'm uh, I'm working on a YouTube series uh, right now. It's 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 being written, you know, as we speak. Uh, I also have a few other things that I'm trying to in, uh, uh, work on. I've been in touch with a quite a few uh, big uh, production companies. Hopefully, that um you know we can get the green light and get some major major projects going on. I'm trying to you know trying to break down that door to Hollywood. Awesome. Awesome. Well, I mean, awesome. Keep going. <laughs> yeah. It's uh, uh, if you really want to, if people are interested and, in, you know, want to get to know more, they can always reach me at, uh, uh, um, a.cole, uh, for LA film. That's my email. Or, you know, look, look me up on, um, on Facebook at, uh, Amir LA film. Amir LA film. I'll make sure to put your links right here at this point here in the video so they'll know where to find you um i'm with you about you know breaking down the doors to hollywood you know the strike is over um they're coming to new agreements for writers but i i, I feel that there is a there is a lane where we don't have to work for hollywood where we can work alongside hollywood and still run our race you know and, and in the veteran space I don't want that control from them trying to dictate what I can and can't put out, but I still want to work with them and we benefit together getting the message exactly. out, you know? So I think this is going to be a great, a great, great thing that we have here, man. And I look forward to dear forgiveness to everybody out there. I want to thank you. This has been what's the business podcast, a special dear forgiveness edition. We have Amir Cole, producer extraordinaire, cinematographer extraordinaire, LA Film School student, soon to be alumni. He's on the way. I'm Lawrence Eugene, your host. Thank you guys. Be sure to share this, like this, and catch out our short film, Dear Forgiveness, streaming in 2024. Coming to a theater and a platform near you. Let's go. We're out. Boom. Peace. <laughs>